Hey there, welcome back to the General Motors 6L Transmission Diagnosis and Troubleshooting Series. Today, we're gonna focus our discussion on the internal mode switch, or IMS for short. So, I'll go through what the internal mode switch is, give you an overview of uh, how it works, the role that it plays in the operation and function of transmission, and then we'll kind of segue into diagnosis and troubleshooting, and I'll show you how to test and evaluate your mode switch to confirm or deny that it is in fact no good and the source of your problems and thus would need to be replaced. Okay, so there's a couple things you're gonna need to do this. Um, first is a DVOM meter or multimeter, uh, at least something that's capable of providing uh, readings in both voltage as well as continuity, meaning ohms or resistance. And then you're also gonna need a continuity and voltage chart uh, for this thing. So I'll go ahead and provide a link into the description so you don't have to go you know, rooting around on the internet to try and find one. And I'll also put a link to the Automatic Transmission Service Group manual for this transmission there as well, because most of the information, uh, especially the very technical aspects of this, this discussion are gonna come from the Automatic Transmission Service Group Manual or Steve Garrett's um, Building and Modifying 6L uh, Transmissions. So anyway, uh, let's talk about what the mode switch is, uh, what it does and you know how it can affect you. So the internal mode switch has one primary function or role and that is to communicate what we call range position to both the TECM or transmission electrohydraulic control module, which is this thing, as well as the powertrain control module. So every single 6L transmission left the factory from 2006 up through end of production in 2021 or 2022 came with an internal mode switch. Okay, they were um, installed on these things from the get go. And what the mode switch will do is communicate range position based on what the driver selects on the gear shifter. And that information will be used by both the TECM to control the transmission, uh, as well as the PCM to even enable you to start your vehicle. So the most important channel or most important communication link um, between this and these other things is gonna be channel N. Okay, channel N, N is in November, is the channel that the mode switch uses to communicate range position and confirm or deny that the uh, transmission is in park or neutral to the powertrain control module so that the driver can start the vehicle up and drive it around. <clears throat> if there is a break in that communication signal for whatever reason, whether it be because the mode switch itself failed or because the wiring harness is no good or because the vehicle wiring harness to the transmission has a short or you know, some other problem, then uh, you will not be able to start the vehicle. You'll have what we call a no crank, no start condition. And so if you find yourself in that position and you don't have any previous history of either starting or charging issues, the, the battery is relatively new or at least it you know, hasn't given you any problems, and you're able to you know, turn on your radio while your internal accessories work, your lights work, and you know, all that kind of stuff seems to be functioning normal, but you just can't get the thing to crank over, like nothing happens when you, you know, turn the key, then <clears throat> I would strongly suspect that something has caused a break in the communication between the internal mode switch and your PCM. And usually it's because the mode switch has failed, not always. You may have a short in the system, uh, either because wires have gotten frayed or you know they've gotten exposed to water or moisture, or maybe there was some other unrelated repairs recently done on the vehicle that uh, you know were you know whoever was doing the work accidentally damaged the wiring harness that runs from the PCM to the transmission. I mean, there's a myriad of things that can cause a, a break in communication. But the bottom line is if that communication link is broken, then you're gonna be dead in the water. So what I always tell folks is to have an extra one of these in the vehicle at all times. And as far as transmission uh, servicing, you know, out in the field or on the road, um, <clears throat> it can be tricky, uh, real cumbersome, especially if the weather sucks, if it's either too hot or, you know, it's pouring rain or whatever, but you can do it, especially if you have a truck 
and you can get under there with a bucket, drain the fluid, drop the pan. These gaskets are all reusable, so you don't have to worry about that. Get the filter out of the way, and then you could swap the mode switch. Now, in order for you to do that, you're going to need a special socket for this bolt right here, okay? Um, this is what I call starfish bolt, or you know, a starfish fastener type, uh, but it's really a um, inverted 12 Torx. And so, Snap-on makes a socket, and the socket number is 10 EPL, and it's 3 8 drive, and it'll work on that fastener, and the other one's just a regular 6.10 millimeter. So, you know, if you find yourself in this situation, you happen to have both that socket, you know, other tools, and a multimeter, you can get under there and you can start testing this thing, and we'll go over that procedure in a second. But um, that is the uh, kind of the beginning and the ending of what the mode switch does. Now, <clears throat> there are a suite of diagnostic trouble codes associated with this thing, and those codes uh, are as follows. So you're going to have either P1825, internal mode switch, and you know this kind of gives you um, the criteria for which it'll set and store. You also have P1875, it'll say IMS sensor out of range, or um, P1915, which means uh, wrong range has been detected. All right, so again, don't worry about screenshotting this or you know trying to read everything on it. Uh, I will put, this is one document, uh, this uh, along with the two, um, testing chart you'll see, the voltage chart and the resistance chart. They're all part of the same Google Doc that I'll put in the link in the description so you have it. But <clears throat> anyway, um, that is uh, how you, uh, you know, that is I should say how the mode switch works and what it does and the role that it plays. Um, so let me go ahead and reposition the camera. We'll get the multimeter over here and I'll bring back that, uh, that document and I'll walk through an example um, because there's multiple different, um, I guess, permutations or combinations, if you will, uh, of resistance testing, all of which kind of require you to execute all of them if you truly want to diagnose this thing end to end. So I'll walk through one example and I'll show you how that you know you can test this thing so that you can determine if in fact it's bad or not and then from there we'll wrap up. Okay to start there is two types of tests that you can perform using a multimeter on the switch. Okay one's going to involve a voltage test and the other is going to be a continuity test or a test for resistance. I'm going to demonstrate the test for resistance um, primarily because I don't have any power source that will give me a 12 volt signal but a continuity test by itself is going to be sufficient enough to confirm or deny problems with the mode switch. All right, so again, here's that document. Um, here is the continuity or resistance testing chart that you'll use and um, kind of refer to when you're running the test. All right, so as you can see, each of these different pins represents a different channel, and each of these channels has a continuity value based on what you're doing with the gear uh, selector, you know, what's happening with that um, selector. So in park, for example, for pin E, which is considered signal P, um, you're supposed to have continuity there. It's supposed to be some sort of resistance value other than nothing, or other than a well. Okay, and then same with park to reverse, you know, making that transition. Um, you'll see when we do the test, the values change a little bit. So as you're shifting your gear or making a different selection, moving it from park to neutral to reverse or whatever, um, continuity values will change. Then based on the, uh, um, the, the schedule here, you'll go from continuity to open to continuity based on where you end up putting the uh, uh, selector. Okay, so anyway, um, that's in a nutshell how to use this chart and you know what you're going to be looking for. You want to make sure that what's happening with your switch as you're moving through, um, you know, your ranges, you know, manipulating the selector there, matches what this chart says. I mean, that that's basically it. And if it doesn't, then you know you have a problem. So like I said, it'll be in the, uh, it'll be, uh, you know, linked in the description. So, you know, don't worry about trying to, you know, use low quality screenshots or whatever. You'll be able to download it. 
Okay, so here is a uh, mode switch that I have out. And here are all the different pins. So you have F, E, D, C, B, and A, assuming you can read my writing. Okay. Um, GM does have each of these kind of um, engraved here on the connector itself. So the only reason I did what I did is to just simply make it a little easier to read. And then here's the underside of the mode switch. And when I've showed you before what the uh, trouble codes were, where you have um, P1875, it's, you know, some of these connectors or switches or surfaces that changed a little bit over time to prevent that kind of corrosion or oxidation that was um, causing this thing to malfunction in some earlier models and causing uh, P1875 to set in store. Okay, so these are all made in Mexico. And then each of these gives you some other different information about all the different, you know, parts of this thing. So when it comes to replacement, you always want to purchase a GM IMS. Don't buy any, you know, aftermarket uh, unknown or, you know, off-brand internal mode switches. I mean, that's just asking for, you know, some sort of disaster. You know, basically you're asking yourself to be stranded, or I should say asking to be stranded. So always buy OEM for any electronic or electrical parts for your vehicle, not just transmissions. I mean, anything that you're going to put onto that vehicle. It should be OEM, and then as far as transmissions are concerned, um, BorgWarner, Rostra, um, and Bosch are uh, either OEM direct or OEM equivalent, and you know you can use those and be fine. All right, I have to uh, figure out how I'm going to set my multimeter up so that you can see. Uh, you know the values that are popping up on it and as I run through the gears So let me figure that out and then we'll resume with the test All right, so I'm going to turn my multimeter on and I'm going to set it to read resistance so ohms and Then the example I'm going to give is going to be where I will connect my uh, positive and my negative to pins A and D, okay? So that's gonna be on here. And like I mentioned, what we're looking for are the sequence of uh, alternating possible values, either continuity or no continuity, based on the range position, as well as the transition from range to range. So just bringing this back real quick. Uh, the IMS that's on the bench. So pin A is going to be here on this side and then pin D is going to be this pin right here. Third one from the left. So FED, CBA. Alright, we have the thing in park. And then I'll go ahead and insert my leads. And then the challenge for me is, of course, going to be to keep these leads in place over those respective pin locations. So we have no continuity in park. Shift in the reverse, and then we see continuity. Neutral. Drive. Okay, manual, so this would be three, two, no continuity, low, no continuity. Okay, these are all manual mode ranges. Okay, now we're up shifting, so we have continuity. Okay, we're in reverse, now we're going to go back to park. And we have nothing. Okay. So that's how you test this IMS. And you could yank it off and test it on the bench if you want. Um, although it would be pretty hard to replicate these detents. 
Uh, the best way to do it is to simply unplug your connector here from the Tecum and just kind of do what I just did with your uh, multimeter. So fairly simple, basic, straightforward, but the internal mode switch is one of those, um, you know, what I call pocket part stranders. Okay, I know that's kind of an unusual term, but, you know, and maybe there's a, probably a better term that, you know, if you think about it, you can come up with. But basically what I'm saying is I like to think about anything on my vehicle that could fit in my pocket, but if it goes bad, strand me. In other words, either cause the vehicle to not operate at all or to operate in such a way that it's not even drivable, you know, regardless of any other considerations. So uh, the internal mode switch will fit in your pocket. It can also strand you, okay? A speed sensor could fit in your pocket, and it, it can also strand you. So anything like that, you know, relays, fuses, um, um, other critical sensors, if they can fit in your pocket and they can also strand you, you want to make it a priority to put spares in your vehicle and have them there at all times. And again, OEM only. Don't buy any kind of aftermarket stuff from like AutoZone or Riley's or CarQuest Advanced Auto Parts unless they're selling you a genuine OEM part. So sensor, switch, solenoid, whatever, um, wiring harness, as long as it's OEM or equivalent, in the case transmission is going to be Rostra, Bosch, or Delphi, um, you're a board warner, they're good to go. But anything else that's off brand, don't tempt fate, you know, don't take the risk. So, anyway, um, that's the video. I uh, hope this was helpful for you, and, uh, you know, hope that this uh, kind of um, you know, gives you a good uh, understanding of how to troubleshoot issues associated with the internal mode switch in these transmissions as well as, frankly, any transmission that, uh, you know, that has one. I mean, they're all the same. You know, they're all fundamentally uh, the same part and they perform fundamentally the same basic function. So uh, this should help you with really any transmission on any year making model vehicle that has one of these anywhere in the world. So anyway, if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them below. If there's anything else I can do for you, uh, again, um, keep me uh, posted in the comments. Otherwise, um, enjoy the rest of your day or evening. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We will see you on the next video. Take care.